We'll start with the prayers. <clears throat> Om Sahana Bhavato Sahana Bunakto Sahaviryam Karavavahe Tejaspina Vadita Mastuma Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 We are doing Taitri Upanishad uh, Bhashyam, Shankaracharya's commentary on Taitri Upanishad. And uh, we are taking up the very first verse of chapter 2. I have uh, taken about 34 slides on that. We have done about 12 topics. We are on the 13th topic now. And uh, this first verse itself is a very long commentary by Shankaracharya. And uh, it's a, it is, it's very intense. And uh, normally they don't take these things uh, unless they find a, a really good audience. Anyway, we have started with this. Uh, we will be doing the first verse. Most probably we'll be doing only the first verse uh, on the Bhashyam because it will take another eight or ten sessions to finish this first verse itself. Why is this first verse so important? Shankaracharya comments on this verse in almost every, every uh, Upanishadi commentary. The main word we should remember is Satyam Jnanam Anantam. That is what we are discussing. Now, these three words, they are describing, describing the highest reality in creation. They are describing God itself. They are describing how we can understand that God. God which we see in temples is an idol. We superimpose different qualities of the uh, higher gunas on that idol and say that that idol is a God. It is a superimposition, a concept. But how to understand that God in my own nature? That is a big challenge. And that is what all Vedantic students they enter, when they enter the spiritual study, they don't understand this, first of all. All of us, by some luck, we just get into this study. We don't know what we are really looking for. But once you get in and then you start understanding what you are studying, then it occurs to us that Upanishads have only one goal. That goal is to help us to know our real nature. At the beginning of the study, we don't realize this. We all enter, Upanishads is very good to study, Bhagavad Gita is good to study, Brahma Sutra is good to study. We just take some YouTube uh, classes, uh, some sessions we hear, or we attend some one or two talks by some Swamiji's. But then those are all... Uh, those are all preparations for the actual study. But once you become a serious student, what happens? You do Tattva Bodha first. Then you do Bhagavad Gita. Then you do Upanishads. Then you do the Bhashya. Then you do the Brahma Sutra. At the end of this, what do I realize? What, what, uh, this study itself will take you over 10 years. Every week, if you take one one session on a Saturday evening, it will take you about ten, almost 10 years to finish this entire course. But what do I get at the end? That is what your goal you should write, you should know right in the beginning. And the goal is explained in the very first verse of the Itri Upanishad. The goal is explained in the very first verse of Mandukya Upanishad. The goal is explained in the very first verse of Isha Vasya Upanishad, and so on. So the Upanishads have this goal. They want to reveal some unique aspect of this creation. 
And that aspect is called as Satyam Jnana Marantam. What is that Satyam is what we are now, we are going to break down Satyam, discuss Jnanam, discuss Anantam, you discuss. But all these three words, they mean only one. They mean only one entity which is called as God in religious language. It is called as reality in philosophy. So reality or absolute nature of God, they are the same. And when you study this, there are three methods. One is you go through the method of the three bodies, gross body, subtle body, causal body. That is one path. The second path is, I'm talking about in Jnana Yoga, what are the three paths? Because the Upanishads uses different, different ways to communicate the same reality. The second part is Avastha Traya Viveka. Avastha Traya Viveka means it is Mandukya Upanishad where you analyze the three states of consciousness. Then the third method is the Panchakosha Viveka. Panchakosha Viveka means the discrimination between the five sheets which cover Atma. That is our study today. That is our study in Taitri Upanishad. There are also another, uh, other methods like Drik Drishya Viveka. Drik Drishya Viveka means seer and seen analysis. So different, different methods are used, but you should remember they are all reaching the same, the truth. That truth, whether you reach it through Avastha Trayam and, uh, they, and call it Turiyam, or you go through Bhagavad Gita and call it Uttama Purusha, or you go through Pancha, this uh, Pancha Kosha Viveka in Taitri Upanishad and you call it Satyam Jnana Marantam. It's the same. The study of Bhashya, commentary of Sankaracharya, is very, very intense, very, very. Uh, Deep in analysis. Very deep. Your mind, you the if your mind can go through this depth of study, then it can reach the truth very easily. There is no substitute for the study of Shankaracharya's Bhashya. You can study hundreds of commentaries written by so many Swamiji's. Hundreds, there are hundreds of books available. You go to the uh, Google, you can get uh, uh, almost two, three hundred versions of Gita and uh, commentaries and, you know, sub-commentaries and so on. But the brilliance of Shankaracharya, you can't match it. I've had the occasion to study three Pashyams, Keno Upanishad, Taitri Upanishad, and... Uh, and uh, the uh, Mandukya Upanishad. And the brilliance which I can see in Shankaracharya's commentaries is amazing. So the time we spend on this study, it will be slow, but it will be deep. You can see the depth when we go through today's session. We stopped in this slide last week. And this is the 13th topic. The 13th topic explains Brahman is Satyam and Satyam means it is Karanam. See, this is how we start. Many times we, Satyam means we, we don't know. Satyam means it's a reality. That's all we, we understand in general terms. But then now we are understanding deeper. Satya means Karanam. Karanam means it is the cause of this entire universe. God is the cause of entire universe. In, we, we generally, we say that God is the creator. And if he is the creator, 
who is what is created created is called as karyam like gold is the cause you have bangle chain these are products karyam clay is a, a clay is the cause satyam and uh, a jug or a pot is a karyam now in chandogya upanishad there is a principle which is defined what is a principle karanam and karyam if you take the analysis of these two you will get the best analysis in chandogya upanishad in verse number chapter 6 verse number uh, section 1 the fourth section which i put here before you what he say what the upanishad says is if you know the lump of earth which is the clay then you will know all the products which are made of clay similarly if you know the satyam the the karanam of the universe which is called as existence satyam in 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 technical language is called as existence don't worry about this technical words it is just words to convey some meaning but really you have to use these words to go deep into the topic so this definition of karanam brahman brahman means reality so don't forget these are all words which i'll be using throughout our study whether this upanishad or the next upanishad which is katha upanishad or mandukya upanishad i will be using the same terms so brahman means it is the reality it is my nature <clears throat> it is not some external entity it is something which to do with me now we say with respect to a bangle or a, a chain we say gold is the karana another word which is used in vedanta for karyam it is the another word which is used is mithya mithya means it is appearing in different forms it has got uh vikara it has got change whereas the karanam always remains the same if you take a lump of uh, in a pot if you take the clay remains the same if you take a jug uh, you take a, you take any any item made of uh, clay all of them have got the same clayness similarly in this world you take at any time anything in this world it is it has got existence as its nature the world yeah like the pot has got clay the world when i say the world it includes you and me also my body is existing this existence is not a part of the body but it is a separate entity okay that is one very important lesson you should know brahman is not a part of this uh, body but it is a separately independent existing entity mandukya upanishad says adavante cha yan nasti vartamane pi tatha tatha so if something is non existent in the beginning like a pot it doesn't exist before when the clay alone was there when the pot is broken it ends similarly the body it didn't exist before the birth body doesn't exist after it is after it dies so what is this body what is this mind if you ask the question philosophically body and mind is mithya it is an appearance in consciousness consciousness is permanently existing entity 
body is appearing in the waking state and it disappears in the sleep state. So when you analyze Vedanta, you should always remember the three states of consciousness, waking, dream, sleep. Without the understanding of the three states, you cannot understand Vedanta. You will never be able to understand. Always you should refer to our experiences. So, what, what is this thought if you ask or body-mind if you ask? It is it is Vyabhichari Surupa. Vyabhichari Surupa means it's a, a changing nature. A Vyabhichari Surupa means what? Which is got no displacement. Atma remains the same. Even in the waking state, Atma is Atma. In the dream state also, Atma is Atma. It illumines the dream body and dream mind. Waking state also, it illumines the body and the whole universe. It never changes. Atma never changes. What changes? The state of the body and mind changes. Like in a gold. Goldness remains the same in a chain or a bangle or in a ring. So, what is the Mithya definition? This is where we stopped last time. Mithya definition is a new topic. Now, Mithya, you should understand, again, if you don't understand Mithya and don't understand Satyam, you have missed the entire boat of Vedanta. You are completely will be lost. Okay? So, please pay attention. Mithya. The word Mithya means it is false. It does not mean it is non-existent. Mithya means what? It is karyam, number one. Karyam means it's a product. Like a chain and a bangle is a product. Similarly, body, mind and the universe of five elements is a karyam. It is mithya. What is the nature of this mithya? The nature of this mithya is it will appear and it will disappear. Appear in the waking state, disappear in the sleep state. Completely changes in the dream state. That is what is called as Mithya. But what does the Mithya rest on? Mithya by itself cannot be independently existing. Suppose you take a rope snake. You cannot have a rope snake without a rope without the existence of the substratum called as a rope, you cannot have a rope snake. Without clay, you cannot have a pot. Without the waker, you cannot have the dreamer. Without atma, you cannot have the waker. Can you see step by step? You have to go step by step. Huh? This is Vedanta. This is how deep you have to go. There is a lot of analysis. Your mind has to go deeper into your own mind. When you go deep into your own mind, this mind will become no mind. When the same mind becomes no mind, the truth gets revealed. That is the trick of Vedanta. You will see it. In the end, you will see how beautifully this whole thing is structured. The entire five koshas are coming and going. Coming and going. In the screen of consciousness. Okay? Now, this verse, if you, you have the time later on, you can see, you can read the verse. Basically, it is a definition of satya. What is Satyam and what is Mithya is explained in this English translation of Shankaracharya's Bhashya. In my notes, which I have circulated to you, it is Shankaracharya's Bhashya's commentary in English, which has also been added. The Sanskrit portion and the English portion. And then for the English portion, you have some notes. 
definition of satyam is given in this uh, uh, in this uh, block here. Yat rupena yat nishchitam tat tad rupena na vyabhichari tat satyam. The most important word here is na vyabhichari. That means whatever appears, this, uh, whatever is not changing, whenever the product is changing, that is called as satya. That is called as karanam. Any product is andrutam. Andrutam means false. There is no production or there are no, there are no products. The five elements did not exist before creation of the five elements. In Big Bang, if you ask the question to a scientist, what was there before the Big Bang, he has no answer. He will only say there was an undifferentiated mass. That's it. But in our Vedantic language, that is called as Ajnanam. That is called as ignorance. It is called as self-ignorance. So, before Srishti, before creation, and after the creation gets dissolved, it is called as Pralayam. In between the Srishti and Pralayam, whatever we are experiencing in the universe, different jivas are experiencing different, different things. See, you are a jiva, I am a jiva. There are billions of jivas, billions of bodies in this universe. But ultimately, the experienced world is different, but the experiencer consciousness is the same. That experiencer consciousness is called as satya. It never changes. Right from the beginning of creation. Can you understand now? Because you have to take your mind not with reference to this body. It's Now we have to take the uh, mind with reference to the whole creation. And say that, is there something which... See, so, so you should never ask the question, what will happen if my body dies? My body dies, but I don't die. What is that I which doesn't die? It is this existence. It is this consciousness. It is this infinite, blissful existence which will never die. So, Sat is Karanam of the Panchabhutas and also of the entire Srishti. And this is the subtlest thing in creation. Because it is outside the creation. It is a spiritual essence. It is not a material essence. Material body is there. Material world is there. Material sun is there. But this is non-material. Non-material is called as spiritual. That is what in Chandogya Upanishad, nine times the Guru tells the disciple Shweta Ketu, Tattvamasi, Tattvamasi Shweta Ketu. You are that, you are that Brahman, you are that reality, you are that Satyam Jnana Mananta. So Satyam is mentioned not as Sateva Satyam, but it is mentioned as Karanam. Satyam is so in today's talk, what you, will, you should understand, there is one reality. That reality is called as Satya. It has never changed from, the, from this, in, from, in, it has never changed at all. It is the only changeless Nitya Vastu in creation. Whatever is the nature of that, that we will see later on. But right now you should understand there is something like that. And what is asatyam? Asatyam means what? Non-truth, non-existence. It is no. It is. It is an appearance, and that is jagat. And that jagat is called as karya effect, product. So Upanishad ex excludes Brahman and distinguishes Brahman from all the products. All the products are what? including your body, my body, these bodies are born and gone. Bodies are born and gone. They have a certain law. 
of karma, which is the cause of the body. It enjoys a few experiences and then it leaves. So a product is called as asatyam, which is karyam, and brahman is called as karanam. We experience only products with our sense organs. We do not experience the karanam with our sense organs. So don't try to see, I will look at, I will in my meditation, I will experience Brahman. It is not possible. Not possible to experience it. As we go deeper and deeper, you will understand why. Because that is its nature. Akasha, Vayu, Agni, Prithivi, Jalam, Body, Mind, Thoughts, all are products. Like what? Products like bangle, ring, chain, and so on. By Satyam definition, entire creation is negated. Why is it negated? Because Vikaratvat Nevartayati. Only one, one reason it, the Upanishad gives you. Shankara gives one reason. What is the reason? He says anything in creation is changing. The pancha bhutas are changing. Rapidly changing. Look at Prithvi. It is, it is uh, flowing. It is, it's in motion continuously. Prithvi. We are all standing in Prithvi, but it is continuously in motion. The planets are in motion. Galaxies are in motion. So there is nothing in creation which is not in motion, and that is Satya, which is Brahman. Brahman is the Karanam Satyam, that is what Chandogya Upanishad says, clay and uh, that's what I've explained to you. Now, what is Karanam? There are two types of Karanam. Upadana Karanam means it is a material cause. And Nimitta Karanam means intelligent cause. Okay? Intelligent, for example, a pot maker is the intelligent cause. Or a goldsmith is the intelligent cause. In the case of pot, the clay is the upadana karna, material cause. Mrit. Or gold is the material cause. Now, without the gold, if you have only the goldsmith, there's no creation. If you have uh, if you have the goldsmith, but no material, again, no creation. So both are required. And Mundo Upanishad, which we have seen before this Upanishad, it's, uh, and, uh, it says that in the case of creation, God is both Nimitta and Upadana Kar. Example which we studied in Mundo Upanishad is that uh, spider which is the intelligent cause and the material cause for the web's creation. Now, a Purva Pakshi will come. This is what is called as an opponent. This is how we do a deeper study. What is the Purva Pakshi is saying? Suppose you say Brahman is a material cause. What is the problem? Number one, Brahman or God will become inner. Material cause means it is jadam, inner. In Sankhya Yoga, material is called as prakriti. In Nyaya philosophy, that is another school of thought, it is called as parama, param anu. Anu means atomic size. Atom. Before physics could discover our Ancient philosophers talked about atomic in nature. All material causes produce effects by undergoing modifications. So, if first of all, it will become savikara. Savikara means it will keep on changing. Any material. Because it belongs to five panchabhutas. And what are the two types of change which can happen in a material? One is called as partial. Another is called as total. 
Suppose you convert milk into curd. After tonight, you put the milk and curd together and then tomorrow morning, the milk will become curd. Completely, it has changed to curd. Suppose a gold becomes a, 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 a chain. What happens? Gold has become chain. It is not a complete, but it is a partial change. Only the shape and the form has changed. So if Brahman becomes the Sadikara Brahman, that will be a problem. That means it will become change, and any change means what? It will become anitya. It will become impermanent. Then any change will have asti, jayate, vardate, viparinyamate, apakshiyate, vinashyati. These are the six modifications which we learnt in Tattva Bodha. Any material, any inert, including our body. Our body has got existence. It gets born, jayate, vardate, it grows. Viparinamate, it becomes, uh, it, it, it changes. Apakshiyate, it, uh, apakshiyate means it declines. Vinashyati means it's gone, it destroys. So, there is a change involved in any inert subject, any inert object, and two problems are there if Brahman, the cause of this whole creation, is an or is a inert substance. It will be Jadatvam and Savikaratva. These are the opponent. Shankaracharya, he says there is an opponent who says that, that Brahman cannot be a Karanam. Karanam is always material in nature. That's what. We will see how Shankaracharya answers this. Okay, that answer will come. Brahman does not have Jadatvam and Savikaratvam. That is Shankaracharya's statement. Why? Just to look at the second word of the Upanishad. What does the second, second word say? Jnanam. Consciousness, awareness. That is the second word used in the Upanishad for the description of Brahman. So, Satyam is Jnanam, Jnanam is Anantam. All three words are interconnected. So when you try to understand that reality, in your own mind, the way you should understand is, it is existent principle, it is a consciousness principle. And the third aspect is, it is a limitless principle. What do you mean by limitless? Timeless. It time does not affect consciousness. That is why we say it doesn't change. Change is a change means what? It is in time. Upanishad uses the word jnanam. For example, for the trees, the karanam is prithvi. The earth can produce different types of trees. Now, prithvi is the karanam. Is the uh, what is the karanam of prithvi? We have seen in Tattva Bodha, we have seen what is the karanam of the earth element? It is jalam. Jalam means water principle. Without water, you cannot have earth. Without fire, you cannot have water. Without air, you cannot have fire. Without space, you cannot have air. Without existence principle or a consciousness principle, you cannot have space. This is the line. Slowly, we have to take our mind to something which your eyes cannot see, but it exists. Satyam Brahma is the Mulam Karanam. It is the ultimate cause of this entire universe. Shankaracharya writes nine lines in his commentary for the word Satyam. But he writes seven pages in Sanskrit language for Jnanam, which is our next topic. 
Topic number 16, connected with Satyam Jnanam Anantam, deals with Jnanam. What is Jnanam? We are going to study in very, very deep detail. Jnana Samanda Vyakchanam, the significance of the word Jnanam is being explained now. Satyam Brahma is the Mula Brahma Karanam. And Jnanam means it is Nya. Nya, the root Nya means to know. Jnanam means knowledge. Gudanam, Vadanam, Vachanam, Iti Jnanam. To be aware of, to experience. When I say I experience something, I experience a mountain. What does it mean? I have the knowledge of mountain. I am experiencing Dukkha. I have the knowledge of sorrow. I am experiencing happiness. I have the knowledge of happiness in me. Other person may be sad, other person may be joyful, other person... But I am experiencing joy means what? I have this knowledge. What is the difference between Sarupa Jnanam and Vritti Jnanam? This is a very, very important and a deep topic in Vedanta. Very, each one of you should understand clearly. Because this will be repeatedly talked in Shruti Sara Samadharanam. It is talked in uh, Upadesha Sahasri. Every, every advanced text will talk about this. Because this is... Uh, if you understand these things, you, are, you understand the basics of Vedanta. Jnanam always means two types of Jnanam. One is called as Vritti Jnanam, another is called as Sarupa Jnanam. Sarupa Jnanam, Vritti Jnanam. Two words, don't forget. Now, Vritti Jnanam is also called as Vasana, it is also called as Anubhava, it is also called as any experience. So, at any time, from, from birth to death, all our experiences are Vritti Jnanam. Vritti means what? Only when the mind is ignited by Chaitanyam, I get the knowledge of the body, mind, and the universe. Remember the Dakshinamurti Stotram, Nana Chit Ghato Darastita Maha Deepak Prabha Vasvaram. That verse you should remember. Anytime you remember, you are trying to talk about or trying to understand Jnanam aspect. Jnanam means Chaitanyam. Knowledge principle. Now, what is the difference between Vritti Jnanam and Sarupa Jnanam? Try to see the differences and then in your own mind, in the next one week, you try to understand when you experience something, keep telling yourself this is Vritti Jnanam. This is Vritti Jnanam. That is the way you should learn something in the class and then apply it in your own life. Momentary experiences, appearances and disappearances are called as Vritti Jnanam. Very simple, for example, you are looking out of the window in your, of your house, you see trees, you see a lot of cars. They are all creating changes in your mind. The objects are outside, but the changes are happening in your mind. All these are vritti. They are, they are coming as thoughts. And what is consciousness? Consciousness is the illuminating light, which is illumining the experiences of the sense organs and the sense objects. That consciousness 
is called as Swarupa Jnanam. It is also Jnanam, but it is non-changing. Non, what is the meaning of non-changing in Sanskrit? How do you call it? Nirvikara Swarupa. Changing vrittis, how do you call it in Sanskrit? Savikara Swarupa. So, a karanam is always required for vrittiya. Karanam is what? Any object is required. Then that will produce a vritti, a thought in your mind. And that thought, is it, is it permanent or it's impermanent? It is impermanent. It is finite. Whatever you experience today, it is always momentary. Changing, 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 changing. Morning to evening, momentary changes. Every moment it changes. At 3 o'clock you did something. At 5 o'clock you are doing something. At 10 o'clock you will be doing something else. That is the nature of the world. See, but what is that in which you see these experiences? That is what is called as Brahma. That screen, that consciousness, that light in which you see all your vrittis is called as Brahman. Now, when you look at Brahman, you do, you, uh, when you look at a vritti, what you should do in every thought, there are two components. One is called as the vachyartha. Vachyartha means what? It is the thing which is connected. Whenever you talk about any thought. A thought means it has got vachyartha and lakshyartha. Lakshyartha means what does the thought indicate? Vachyartha means it is a popular meaning. Thought means vritti. Thought means it is some knowledge about something. But what is, what is that knowledge? What does it indicate? That is what is called as lakshya. Every thought indicates that knowledge principle which is called as shaitan. In Panchadasi, in the first chapter, which I'm doing nowadays in the Wednesday classes, I have finished this verse when I did the Wednesday class. I'm doing Panchadasi. I'm in the 15th or 18th verse now. Now, uh, of the first chapter. The objects of knowledge, which is the sound, the touch, the smell, the form, all these are perceived in the waking state. They are different because their nature is different. Sound is different than form. Form is different than smell. But they are all are different. But the consciousness of this, I am conscious of the sound. I am conscious of the form. I am conscious of the smell. That consciousness, which is the light principle, the knowledge principle, which is common to all the five sense objects, that never changes. It is different from the sense objects, but it is non-changing. That is how you should understand consciousness. So, Sorupa Jnanam is Shuddha Chaitanya. Shuddha Chaitanya means what? Pure consciousness, pure light, pure awareness. The next point about Swarupa Jnanam is it is neither the knower, known or the knowing instrument. Very important point. I'm going to expand on this. We are going to go very deep on this particular topic. Swarupa Jnanam means it is the knowledge of itself only. I know I am consciousness only. In the deep sleep state, all of us know ourselves as consciousness only. Prashna Upanishad, Bhairadhanik Upanishad, Chandoga Upanishad tells us that we are with our Sarupam in our sleep state. That is our Swarup. In that state, there is no Tripoti. There is no sense in object. 
there is no instrument there is no uh, nobody owning that i am seeing or i am doing something so vritti jnanam by lakshana reveals sakshi swarupa jnanam okay every time you sit in meditation all will say that i got disturbed by the thoughts that means what your attention was on the changing thoughts and you were running behind the thoughts and getting a, the thoughts were absorbing you completely and you got swallowed by the thoughts like you get swallowed by the waves in the ocean suppose you are standing at the shore watching the wave you are not absorbed by the water and the wave and the ocean you are aloof similarly you have to watch your mind as if it is a distinctly different object then what happens then you are that jnanam which is pure consciousness you have dropped that thought and you have remained as your swarupa the final meaning of jnana means it is pure consciousness in which there is no thought it is bhava vipatti lakshyarthaha these are all some technical terms lakshyartha means indicative meaning what is the basic difference between vishishta advaitin and advaitin you might have heard some of you who are advanced students of vedanta you might have heard in advaitam itself there are two one is vishishta advaita ramanuja acharya what did he say god and i can never be equal god is always superior to me i am always inferior that is called as vishishta advaita god is different ishvara is the knower i am the known i am the dasa ishvara is the is the uh, is always the controller now what does advaitam say advaitam says say that unless until you know that ishvara and i in essence are the same consciousness then only you will get moksha shankaracharya now this nirguna chaitanyam without gunas without any attributes you see in the case of vishishta advaitin it is god has got superior attributes jiva has got inferior attributes what does advaitam says advaitam says superior and inferior is vachyartam it is a popular meaning but there is a lakshyartha there is a indicative meaning of this ishvara and jiva that is nirguna chaitanya we are all studying what shankaracharya's bhashya shankaracharya is a proponent of advaitam okay so this consciousness is non knowing consciousness in its ultimate nature it becomes temporarily a knower when it is in front of the material world of body mind or the universe what is the nature of brahman what is your nature and my nature our own nature is our nature is pure consciousness as consciousness i am not born i am not dying i am always there that is swarupa jnanam as a body what happens i experience in the waking state i experience some other body in the dream state i experience no body in the sleep state this is called as vyabhichari swarupa vyabhichari i said is changing a vyabhichari swarupa means what changeless chaitanyam principle what what shankaracharya says is 
if this Brahman is a known entity, suppose it is a part of the Triputi, knower, known, knowing instrument, then what will happen? Then that Brahman will never be infinite. This is his argument. See, look at that. Brahman will not be infinite in nature if it is one of the Triputis. See, this is the depth. You have to go, see, normally in our uh, uh, Upanishad classes, we don't go into this depth. We say it's Jnanam principle and then we, we just go to the next line. But then here, Jnanam means what? It is not the Triputi. Triputi means subject, object, and instrument, which is a Vritti Jnanam. I am talking about something other than Vritti Jnanam, which is called as Sarupa Jnanam. What is the best definition of Jnanam in the entire Vedanta Upanishads which you get? What is the best definition of Jnanam? To ask that, it is Chandogya Upanishad, Bhuma Vidya, Chapter 7, Section 24, the first verse. Narada gets enlightened from Sanat Kumara. The Guru is Sanat Kumara. Narada is the disciple. Narada goes and tells him, I have got PhD in about 36 topics. Astronomy, geology, I know everything about geology, astronomy, which uh, uh, so many things I know. But tell me something. I have still not got rid of sorrow. Look, come. What is the knowledge by which I can get rid of Dukkha? Then this Sanat Kumara gives this beautiful definition. Don't forget this definition. Yatra nanyat pashyati, nanyat shrunoti, nanyat vijanati, sa bhuma. Bhuma means Brahman. Brahman means consciousness. What did we study just now? Brahman is where there is no triputi. Triputi means what? Knower, known, knowing instrument. In the waking state, we are having this triputi. In the deep sleep state, there is no triputi. Now you see the difference? Deep sleep state is a homogeneous mass of consciousness. Waking state, knower, known, reality uh, instrument comes up. What is Brahman then? It is neither the deep sleep state, it is neither the waking state, but it is beyond the sleep state and beyond the waking and the dream. What is the nature of that Brahman? That nature is where one does not see anything. This is Brahman. Where one does not hear anything and where one does not think about anything. Doesn't know anything. Nanyat vijanati. Sabhuma. That alone is infinite bliss. Your nature alone is blissful. There is nothing Thing else blissful in the universe. Everything else is alpam, finite. Everything else you will have dukkham. It will seemingly it will have sukham. But when it goes away, every sense object will go away. It's a guarantee. It is a it's a fact. Which joy has remained permanently with us? This is the knowledge you should have. There is not a single joyful experience which is permanent in life. Nothing. It comes for some time, it goes away. It comes for some time, go away. This is life. This is what we learn from Vedanta. And it is very useful knowledge. Narada asked Sanat Kumara to teach Bhuma Vidya. Like how you are learning uh, uh, Brahma Vidya in Taitri Upanishad, the what he says is Jovai Bhuma Tat Sukham. 
only bhuma alone is sukham brahman alone the nature alone what is the nature in which you don't see anything you don't hear anything but you are existing as that pure consciousness don't stop with the sleep state many people make a mistake when they study vedanta they think sleep state is brahman no it is not brahman it is a tamasic guna this is the statement you should apply go beyond that drop that guna tamo guna of the sleep state and claim your nature as brahman it is not a member of triputi see now you can see the difference between swarupa jnanam and vritti jnanam vritti jnanam is always with triputi of the knower known knowing instrument the knowing instrument can be the sense organs together with the mind but what is infinite is that swarupa jnanam which is called as bhuma and that alone is ananda swarupa it alone is the infinite only infinite thing in this whole universe and if you claim that as your nature you have crossed immortality you have crossed mortality you have become immortal asatoma sadgamaya tamasoma jyotirgamaya mrityoma amritangamaya prayardanik upanishad you cross over mrityu Kathopanishad also. Nachiketa wanted to know how to cross this mrityu. When somebody dies, people say, yes, there is something existing. Some people say there is nothing existing. In Kathopanishad, we're going to do next. That, that's the question. Is there anything after death? This is it. Bhuma is what is there after death. So the definition of Bhuma is yatra nanyat pashyati nanyat sonoti. When you go to that state, in Mandukya Upanishad, the same Bhuma is called as Turiyam. What is the definition of Turiyam? It is given in this verse, number 7. Na anta pragnyam, na bahish pragnyam, no bhayata pragnyam, na pragnyam, na pragnyana ghanam, adrishyam, avyavaharyam, agrahyam alakshanam achintyam avyupadesham shantam prapancha upashamam shivam advaitam advaitam is coming here see what is shankaracharya saying my nature is advaitam my nature is turiyam this turiyam is the fourth state compared to the other three states of waking, dream and sleep. This is what is bhuma. This is what is satyam, jnanam, anantam. See how beautifully we are able to connect. Taitri Upanishad, Chandogya Upanishad, Mandukya Upanishad, all of them are talking about the same bhuma, the same principle. How do I realize it in my own bosom? Very easy. Just close your eyes and say, I am not the five koshas. Whatever is left over after I remove all the five koshas, all the five sheets, annamaya, pranamaya, manomaya, vikyanamaya, anandamaya, what remains is this bhuma, very intense, very, very deep, but it is the truth. By knowing this, what will happen? Dukkha nevrati. All my sorrows will be gone. It will come and go, come and go. That is the nature of the world. You will accept the world as it is. Shankaracharya says, we are not changing the world. We are only changing the conclusion. I'm going to mention that in the next few slides. So the knower is always finite. The knower is ahamkara, the ego I. But the chaitanyam behind that knower, which is illumining that knower, the consciousness principle in that knower 
is always exist jnanam when you study upanishads jnanam can denote four things at different different places jnanam can be used the word jnanam can be used for a knower it can be used for the known object it can be used for the knowing instrument it can be used for as a knowing process in this case of taitri upanishad it is bhava vyutpatti usage in the bhava form in the vritti form in many other upanishads knowledge see whenever you get the word jnanam don't get confused you it can mean any of the four or it can mean absolute jnana which is your nature okay so vritti jnanam is vishesha jnanam it is vachyartha it is a popular meaning swarupa jnanam is a knowing principle consciousness principle it is the lakshyartha indicative meaning of the word jnanam it is pure consciousness without any objects okay topic number 16 is very very important because it tells you how i can discriminate between jnanam in my waking state jnanam in the dream state no jnanam in the sleep state and the absolute jnanam which is my nature which is satyam jnanam anat in the waking state and the dream state it is vritti jnanam knower known knowing instrument all triputi is there it is the vachyartha of the popular meaning of the word knowledge okay so this topic extremely important out of all the 16 topics the 16th topic is the most important so far what we have covered next topic 17th topic why brahman is not a knower this is a question asked by the purovakshi this is how the commentary is written a question is asked and then the answer is given why do we ask these questions so that in your mind if you can ask this question answer the question you will have more clarity of thought you will have clarity in the in the knowledge of the veda shankaracharya refutes brahman as a knower we'll see why if knower is this brahman it will become limited like for example in the waking all of us are limited only we all have limited knowledge i have limited knowledge of my own body mind i don't have the knowledge of my uh, my son's uh, thoughts no i don't have so brahman will also become a limited jeeva so therefore brahman is not a knower it is a knowing principle it is the lakshyartha it is the illuminating principle like the sunlight the rays of the sunlight sunlight by by itself is only bright in nature it is illuminate it can illumine the whole earth brahman knower will become finite limited now the third word which is used is anantam so to harmonize the anantam which is a visheshanam of brahman we should not take brahman as the knower this is the most important argument which shankaracharya gives so it is not that i am aware see for example i am brahman i am aware of this body and mind no that is not brahman that is only the ahamkara it is only a reflection it is only a chaya in vivek chudamani shankaracharya says this is a chaya the body is a chaya shadow don't give too much importance it will come it will go it will have experiences it will go away. this experiences why it happens because some law of karma is there that's all but what is illumining that that is chaitanya brahman does not know anything other than itself so at any time in meditation don't try to objectify your the nature 
I know myself is the truth. Full stop. The moment you start objecting, I'm seeing Brahman, I'm trying to know Brahman, I'm trying to realize Brahman, these are all thoughts. Yatra na anyat pasyati, yatra vijanati. Okay? What happens when something else is there and you are there, that is what is called as duality. Duality is mithya. Advaitam is satya. Okay? Advaita means it is non-dual in nature. Advaita means that consciousness is the adhisthanam. It is the basis on which everything gets revealed. So the knower and known is popularly experienced by all. The instrument is popularly used in the waking and in the dream state. In the dream state, what is the instrument we use to know for to know everything? It is the mind. In the waking state, what is the instrument which we use? It is our sense organs together with the light of the mind. So it is all dvaitam. But dvaitam is not real. It appears, it disappears. It appears, it disappears. That which is dvaitam is absent, but when it is absent in the sleep state, Bhuma is existing, Chaitanya is existing, you are existing. That existence principle is what I should hold on to as my real nature. I won't see anything in that. I won't experience anything. For seeing or experiencing, you need the mind. Bhuma is not a feminine gender like Rama, uh, like Sita, Rama. It is masculine Sahabhuma. Now, next topic. What is the nature of this Brahman? See, each of these topic gives you some idea, uh, some concepts in your mind so that you can drop all the vrittis and come to realize this pure nature. The nature of Brahman is revealed where one exists without perceive, perceiving the duality of a triad or, uh, or a, 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 a tripodi. Okay? So, whenever you experience the tripodi, it is called as Maya. Okay? Whenever there is duality, it is called as a Shakti. What is this whole making? It is a Shakti of that Bhuma. It is a Shakti. So how do, in my waking state, how do I transcend the body and mind with the knowledge that I am that entity which is called as pure consciousness and in that consciousness, it alone is. Upanishad does not want us to change our experiences. See, this is very important. This line is very important. So don't try to change your waking experience. In my waking state, I have to do something and I have to have some exotic experience of some light, something. No. Upanishad does not work in the field of experiences, which is Dvaita Anubhava. All experiences. You might have said, I experienced Ishvara in my... But what Vedanta says, that is not your real nature. It may have come and gone, but it is not. It is Why it is not real? Because it was an appearance. That's all. So Upanishad neither changes the available experiences, nor gives us a new experience, but asks us, to work for the diff uh, 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 it does not ask us to work for a different experience. It does not say go to samadhi and you will realize Brahman. No, Upanishad is very clear. What is clear? Vedanta does not work in the experiential realm. Where does Vedanta work? Vedanta works in the conclusion in our intellect, which we make. Vedanta attacks our conclusion. What is our current conclusion? Body, mind is real. 
Dwaitam is real. I was born. Is real. It is not an appearance. But why do we say it's an appearance? Because I don't know that consciousness nature. Till you know that consciousness nature as your reality, as your sarupam, you will always think this making world is real. So the conclusion of Vedanta, what Vedanta is teaching us, it is teaching us that your conclusion is wrong. Your conclusion is, I am born, I am dying is wrong. Change that conclusion, I am consciousness, which is not born, which is not dying. I am the immortal self. Triputi, which is experienced by us, is mithya. It is appearance. Mithya is a unique uh, creation of Vedanta, Advaita Veda. Not many other philosophies accept this. What Vedanta says is, this creation is for Punya Papa exhaustion. That's all. But that is at a lower level. You understand it and then drop it. After that, you come and realize your true nature. The Triputi is a seemingly existent appearance. Triputi is not existent or non-existent. This is the definition of Mithya. What is the definition of Mithya? Mithya is an appearance which you cannot say it is existent, which you cannot say it is non-existent also. Can you give me an example? What is the best example? Dream. Once you understand dream, then everything in waking will also, you will be able to explain. Yesterday's dream existed? No. Now it is not existent. Gone. That dream is gone. So what is dream? Dream is Mithya. If you understand dream is Mithya, waking is an extension of the dream. Mandukya Upanishad, clearly, step by step, it will come to you and say, don't worry, waking is also an experience, but it is appearing, disappear. One week ago, what did you experience? Gone. All experience gone. Of the waking, not of the dream. Right now, the, one month ago, you experienced some dukkham. Is it there? No, it's not there. Now I'm very happy. One week later, I'll explain, I'll experience something else. So this is the nature of the world. This is Triputi. This is Maya. This is Karyam. This is product. It is not Satyam. All this is Asatya. All this is Ajnanam, ignorance. All this is called as self-ignorance. In Mandukya Upanishad, Shankaracharya brilliantly says, the entire waking state, dream state, sleep state, all the three states as Ajnanam. It is spiritual ignorance. Drop it. Become knowledgeable about who you are, which is Bhuma, which is Suryam, which is Satyam Jnana Manantam. So don't try to change the experiences with the given experiences of waking dream sleep and your surupam and vritti jnanam, try to understand the conclusion. Like what? Like the example of moonlight and sunlight. While seeing the moonlight on a, a, a Purnami day, on a bright moon, you see a bright moon. It can illumine a lot of things in the, uh, on the earth. But that light, does it belong to the moon? No, it belongs to the sun. Similarly, the light in which I'm experiencing the entire waking and dream and sleep state, that light is light of Atma. I should focus on that and live the life as it comes, as it goes.
So Vedanta does not want to change our perceptions or experiences. Understand, Vedanta only wants us to work on the conclusion which we derive from our life's experiences. The question you should ask is, what is the adhishthanam of the Tripodhi? What lends existence to this experience of the mind? Waking, dream and sleep are the three upadis, the mediums of for transactions with the mind and without the mind. Without the mind in sleep state, with the mind in dream and waking. What is Bhuma? It is Nishprapancha. There is no universe there. Saprapancha is Mithya. Saprapancha is waking and dream. So, Atma is not a knower, known, knowing instrument, but it is the substratum. It is the Adhishthanam. So, self-knowing is not the message of Vedanta. I know myself. No. I know that I am the knowledge which is Chaitanya Swarupa. So, it is not a Vritti Jnanam, it is Swarupa Jnanam. So, Jnanam should be taken as pure consciousness. It should not be taken as consciousness with objects. Okay. Uh, so what did we learn so far? Pure existence is not a product or a property of the objects in creation. That Bhuma, that existence consciousness is an independent entity. It is the only eternal principle, Nitya Vastu. What happens, but when the body dies, what happens? Why I'm not able to experience the world? Experiencing the world is not Brahman. As, that is the definition of Brahman. When you're not experiencing the world, but you are in your own nature, that is what is Nitya Brahman. The surviving pure existence is not available for transactions when the body dies. And that is what is called as Paramarthika Sarupam or Tattvam. It is absolute nature. Jnanam is not Kartru, Karma, Karana, Vyutpati. That means it is not the Tripoti. It is not the knower principle. Jnanam negates the Jadatvam of the material creation, cause of creation. Do you remember what did we start? The whole dialogue we did, when we started Jnanam, we ended Satyam with one thing that it cannot, the reality cannot be Satyam because it is Jadam. And then we said it is not Jadam, it is Jnanam. This is the end of that. This Jnanam definition of that reality, which is consciousness principle, negates the uh, the obstacle which the Puru Bhakshi brought about as something which is changing Savikaratvam and Jarat. Next week, we will take up uh, this uh, topic number 19. Uh, uh, this is advantages of using Dhamman as consciousness principle. What is that? Okay, let me finish this within five minutes. What is the advantage of using Brahman as consciousness? The two misconceptions are negated. What are the two misconceptions? That it is Jadatvam and it is uh, changing. So with reference to the uh, universe, Brahman is non-material consciousness. It is Chaitanya Suru. So anytime you want to meditate on the, uh, on the nature of yourself, you should only sit down and say, I am of the nature of awareness. Pure awareness. 
when you do that if you can do it for a longer period it is what is called as samadhi you are in your own blissful state okay so by definition of brahman every experience is negated because experience means always remember experience is always to do with the mind whenever the mind is there it is not it is only vritti jnanam it is not swarupa jnana when we are experiencing itself the world if you know the knowledge that it is my nature is satyam jnanam then by looking at the world itself as a waker with open eyes you can do meditation of your swarupa whatever we know is negated by satyam jnanam anam by satyam what do we negate we negate the changing objects vikara there is something which is vilakshana vilakshana means which is beyond all changing objects by using the word jnanam what do we negate we negate so satyam will negate changing objects savikaratvam is negated jnanam negates inertness jadatva anantam will negate what all the finiteness is negated finite time is what time bound place bound so what is the definition of brahman it is neither in time neither in space it is beyond time and space it is neither in objects it is beyond objects when you put together what happens brahman is different from changing inert finite objects creation time body all are not satyam jnanam anantam brahman is different from anatma jagat okay so now we will stop next week we are going to do a very interesting topic shankara acharya brings out another purva pakshi which is a very very common question asked by all the students of vedanta when i negate the three states there is only nothing when i negate the pancha koshas there is only nothing when i look for negation there is only nothing nothing is there what are you saying brahman and all that brahman means nothing it is shunyam it is vacuum non existent principle that is what one of the opponents which is madhyamika shunyavad in in, in uh, mandukya upanishad in uh, chapter 4 alata shatam alata shanti prakaranam that uh, the fourth chapter you will get all the philosophers shankara acharya will take every philosopher and he will negate them he will give logical reasons and say that your philosophy is not right that is what we are going to discuss next week very interesting portion many reasons will be given by shankara acharya why that brahman cannot be nothing several reasons interesting very interesting area okay so next week slide number 55 topic number 20 so with that we close today om purnamada purnamidam purnahat purnamudachchade purnasya purnamadhaya purnameva avashishade om shanti 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 hari om shri gurubhyo namaha hari om But there's nothing on the chat box so if you have a question uh you can uh, ask them uh just an announcement the next week in uh, in the wednesday classes at the end of wednesday classes i do have some meditations so i'm going to start a new 
section of meditation verses from Vivek Chodamani. There are 40 verses which I'm going to do. Each week, maybe two, three verses. If the verse is very good, I will have only one verse. Sometimes it will be two, three. So there will be 40 verses of, of Vivek Chodamani starting on next Wednesday meditation session. It will be along with the uh, uh, with the Panchadesi chapter 1. So if you are interested, you can uh, either join or you can just, uh, just uh, uh, attend in person or just join the classes and you'll get your videos. So 115 meditation sessions I've conducted. I've, I've given a, uh, a, a link for all the 115 sessions. And for the next 40 sessions, we are going to see See, meditation is basically a, is a, is a, is a, is a time which you spend to realize what we are learning in Shravanam. In our normal Vedanta classes, we hear about our nature. So 10 minutes we spend, that is what Shankaracharya does. See, he gives us some clues. We take those clues, clues and then we dwell on it. Okay, any questions on today's uh, session? Uh, Shekhaji. Hello, uh, my Earlier, you said that uh, Brahman cannot be feel or, or felt. So, it, can it be a subject? Yeah, it is a subject. So, it is a subject, but it is not an object. Yeah. It is not an object. Suppose you say, I am uh, seeing Brahman. Then it is not, you are not seeing Brahman. Suppose you say, I am Brahman. Then it is the right thing. There is a subject. Uh, ha, that is called a subject. You see, oh. uh, in, in Bhagavad Gita, in the, in the 19th or 20th verse of chapter 10 of Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna tells Arjuna that the I'm going to now tell you all the glories. He talks about some 50, 60 glories in that. He says the first glory, my first glory, Lord Krishna says, is Aham Atma Guda oh. Aham oh. Atma. I am that. That what you call it as Aham. Suppose you close your eyes and you say Aham. That aham, I, means pure consciousness. Suppose I say, I am Babu Bhai. I am father of so-and-so. I am son of so-and-so. I am brother of so-and-so. That is not Brahm. Mm. I am Uma. Uma is a name given to a body. I am, and then you stop. That is what is awareness. That is what is consciousness. And that is what you are when you are sleeping. When you are sleeping, you are with that aham. That aham doesn't have any objects in front. The moment object is in front, you become something else. That consciousness with objects is Babu Bhai, Ajita, Jacqueline, Sumana, Gopa, Jaya, everybody is with a name. Why this? The bodies are different. Bodies are born with some law of karma. Let it go through. You see, once you have this Vedantic knowledge, it doesn't mean that you should stop completely all your activities. No. You do your activities, do your duty to the best of your ability. If you can help somebody, help. If you can do some seva, you do seva. If you, uh, I mean, the body is meant for that. You cannot stop it. As a brother, as a sister, as a, um, a wife, as a husband, you can do whatever you can. But have very clear clarity in your mind. <clears throat> this is an incidental role I'm playing. Till the body is there, the role will be played. It is a law of karma. It is a law of creation. But what the law is saying is there is something else. This law of karma depends on the light of the spiritual light. And that is what I have to learn from the Veda. 
it is possible all the janis in the past have done the same study like you and me you and i can also be with the help of the shruti we can understand and be free from our mind okay good question thank you, thank you. as you earlier said uh, is a uh... Brahma is Shunyam. Right? No, no, it is not Shunyam. You see, I'm, 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 see, Brahma is Shunyam is said by some other opponent. That Puro Bhakshi, you know, who's coming to fight with uh, Shankaracharya. When yeah. I experience, when, you know, you see, Shankaracharya said that you, in your sleep you are Brahma. Now, some, some opponent, another philosopher, comes and tells him, okay, but when I'm sleeping, I don't experience anything. I experience what I'm experiencing is called as nothing. That is not Shankaracharya's. It is another philosophy who is called as Madhyamika philosophy. He will come. There are about 10 or 12 philosophers. Uh, they come and uh, give one opinion or the other on Atma. For example, many uh, there is Sankhya says there are many, many Atmas. You are one Atma, I am one Atma. Shankaracharya will say, don't think like that. It is wrong thinking. If there are many Atmas, then it will be against the, uh, against the uh, Shruti. It will be against the Upanishads. Okay, but the but the word subject uh, in the dictionary have a different meaning, isn't it? Ah, English dictionary will have a different meaning. It is not consciousness. Mm -hmm. Subject in the English dictionary is different. Mm -hmm. When you come to Vedanta, when you come to the scriptural study, that subject is consciousness. Consciousness. Ah, that is what is the difference between other schools and us. In so, this consciousness, everything is dissolved. You see, everything is born, everything is appearing, and everything is dissolved. How does it get dissolved? Exactly like in sleep. In sleep. In sleep, what happens? All the differences which you see in the waking state, they become undifferentiated. That undifferentiated state is called a sleep. It is a reality. It is something which you and I are experiencing. Mm -hmm. It is a part of this creation. Mm. See, in the waking state, Babuba is different. Shekhar is different. Vijaya is different. Sumana is different. Jacqueline is different. Different, different, different. In the sleep state, if I ask you, where is Jacqueline? Where is Asha? Where is Tapan? Where is Gopa? Where is Achita? Where is Vibhuti? Venkate? Where is all this? All have become one. One mass of consciousness. This is what Shankaracharya screams in Mandukya Upanishad. Say that it's your own experience. It is your own Advaita experience. It is not Dvaitam. It is not Dvaitam means what? There is no plurality in sleep. So what is, when you look at the world, will you say that is real or you will say Dvaitam is real? What Shankaracharya is saying? He is saying neither Dvaitam is real, neither that uh, 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 differentiate, undifferentiated state is different. He says both are not real. Sleep is not real. Dream is not real. Waking is not real. What is real? The one which eliminates all the three is real. That is you. That is jnanam. That is my real nature. That is what is, I am immortal. When I know that that is what I am, everything else is anatma. Good. Anybody else has a question? No, Jacqueline. Yeah, I have two questions. Uh, Question changing and changing shivoham shivoham. Uh, so changing and changing, in fact, uh, we are unchanging, but the world is changing and all the time, just like the TV, the things inside there keep on changing. 
but we are unchanging. Is that so, right? Absolutely right. Okay, that's shivoham, shivoham. Shivoham means changeless atma. Okay, the changeless atma is equal to unchanging also, right? In the changeless atma, the changing is coming and going. Okay. In the changeless screen, TV screen, all the movies changing movies are coming and going. The movie of waking dream and sleep, movie of waking dream and sleep for all the jivas is coming and going in consciousness screen. Oh, consciousness. Consciousness. The, the, I don't know. The screen is not changing, but the inside of the screen is changing, right? Correct. Inside is the movie. Inside is the characters. Jacqueline, yeah, yeah. Asha, Amyanchu. All these are all characters in the movie. Yeah. Right now, I'm taking a class. It is a movie. Yes. It will go away. After one hour, this movie is gone. Yeah. <laughs> then you're into another movie, you know? Yeah. Yep. So that is how life is. But don't get attached to this. Yep. Just to say, I am that, that Shivo Hum. What you said is correct. Shivo Hum um, stands for the screen of consciousness. Shivo, Shivo Hum stands for the eternal principle. Oh, okay. Good. I, I always heard you say Shivo Hum, Shivo Hum. But yes. I never realized that I have to ask that question only for so long. Then I, you know, okay. Appreciate. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Anybody else has a question? Yeah, I'm Yanchu. Uh, Bolo. I'm having a feeling that. Why this uh, temporary thing or, or impermanent temporary things? How will all this permanent thing that is will not never will not never be able to know the Atma? Correct. Be. Yes, that's only, sure. only a part. That's only correct. Part. Yes. By knowing the impermanent things, we are only seeing a part of the creation. Like uh, in, my question, secondly, my question is: all this impermanent that is mind or body or my intellect, whatever it is, only and I only for me, I cannot know the permanent. Whatever I will be knowing, only part of it. No, what you have to okay, you have to wait for some other knowledge to come. There is some gap of knowledge. What Shankaracharya says is. By looking at the impermanent things, your mind should be able to realize that permanent thing. This is the ultimate job of a seeker. The job but of the seeker maybe, is... But we have taught us nati, 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 whatever you objectify, correct. you just discard it. Correct. You, you can re... First of all, you should understand that the world is impermanent. Second, uh, you should use that method of neti neti and try to remain firm in the knowledge of the Brahman principle. That consciousness principle, I am that consciousness. You see, everybody can say I am Atma. Atma is a very beautiful word. I am the self. I am the self each one of us can say. I am the self means what? I am the, there is some, there is some principle in me uh, which is not changing. And that is my experience also. You see, I, the, my experience is what? My body has changed. My body was five years old, 10 years old, 40 years old. Now it is 70 years old. It has changed. The body has changed. But I know that, you know, there is something which has not changed. My, my attention so far has been on the changing body. Before coming to Vedanta, I have been always looking at the body, mind, world, body, mind, world, body, mind, world. Now that part is gone. Now slowly the attention is now being shifted to consciousness. 
that is the change. Now that you should develop it further. Let your mind, let it be a slow process. It will not be a fast, uh, you know, it will not be a revolution, but it is an evolution. It is a slow process. Let the mind take its time to remain in that consciousness. In the bhakti language, you can say that Bhagwan is there, my body, I am with that Bhagwan. I am with that Lord. There is some Lord who has created the universe. There has to be a creator. This world cannot remain, even for a smallest thing, there is an intelligent principle. That the intelligent principle is called as Bhagwan. And that Bhagwan is there in everything. If he is a creator, he is a cause, Karanam, in every product, the cause is there. In all the pots, clay is there. So if the cause is in the world, the, that cause has to be in this body also. What Vedanta says is that cause is called as Chaitanya. And you can realize that the independent nature of Chaitanya, without the word, it's possible. Make an attempt. Okay? Thank Rigarji, you. Rigarji, is this, is this uh, you know, similar to the Parokshanana to Aparokshanana, what you talk about? Yes, yes, Absolutely. From Parokshanyanam, that Brahman exists, that is Parokshanyanam. God exists, is Paroksham. How do you make Parokshanyanam to Aparokshanyanam? I am that God principle, I am the Chaitanya principle by following this method of dropping the five koshas, by following the method of just to drop your three states of the mind. Waking dream sleep, waking dream sleep is just nothing but it is my mind going through three states. But go when you when you try to understand Vedanta, when you come to understand Upanishad and Mandukya Upanishad, what does Shankaracharya say? Shankaracharya says that pure Chaitanyam, which is you, is itself appearing as this waking. It is, it is appearing, Chaitanyam, Chaitanyam, it's not your mind. Chaitanyam is appearing as this waking state, dream state, sleep state. And it is, it is, it is, it's, it, and what is the fourth pada of that Chaitanyam? The fourth pada of that Chaitanyam is stateless state, Turiyam state. First pada is waking, second pada is dream, third pada is sleep. The three padas belong to the Chaitanyam. And this Chaitanyam has the fourth pada that is called as stateless. That means what? Its own nature is the fourth state, which is Turiya. Very beautiful analysis of Shankaracharya in Mandukya Upanishad. You would never have seen this type of uh, 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 sig uh, significant depth in the, in the Upanishads. When you when you just hear somebody talking and all that, it is different. But when you do Shankaracharya's Vashyam, now you are doing Taitriya Vashyam. See how depth, what depth it is coming into. Shama has got a question here. All creation objects are continuously moving, including sun and all that. Okay. But beyond the duality, there is actually no change. Brahman Satyam is not changing, nor moving. Not Achalam, you are right. Uh, not this or that, that's also correct. As Celestial, I am the same in three years. Why is there the desire to know the self or the Brahman? Okay, good question. Why is there a desire in all jivas to know? their own self. The reason is, all of us are made of two principles. One is Anatma, another is Atma. 
all of us are trying to reject the anatma because they know it is impermanent. They know that anatma is impermanent. Everything in nature always goes back to its nature. That is the principle. Anything which you see in creation, it will go back to its nature. For example, you take the pot. When it dies, what happens? It goes back to its nature. Play. Similarly, furniture will go back to wood. Similarly, Anything in nature will go back to its origin. The origin of this whole creation is Atma. In Taitri Upanishad, from that Atma, Akasha is born from Akasha, Vayu is born from Vayu, Agni is born. That is the creation which has been explained in Taitri Upanishad. From where is a, a, a space born? Space is born from Atma. So when I am in the deep sleep state, everything is in non-differentiated condition. That non-differentiated condition is called as Ajnanam. It is called as Mula Avidya. So in other words, yeah. in other words, uh, there is, uh, at least for sentient beings like the human beings, there is a, Always that kind of little awareness, we do have Sakshi Chaitanya, whether we uh, st stifle the voice or we are aware of it and accept it, it's constantly driving us to find out who we are. Yes, you're that, right. You're yeah? right. There and the more the... pure purified as the sattva yeah. you say, yes. the more sattva it is, the yes. more it actually bangs on your door and says, please listen, please listen. Correct. All that you so far yeah. are seeing is rubbish. That's correct. That is not what you want. You want to be yourself. Be means you want to be aware of yourself. That's correct. That's yeah? why is I that say that being, it. just being itself is yourself. And the joy, joy of. That, that being is joy. You see, all of us are very, very happy in sleep. Without any world, without any anything in the world. And Sometimes even in why do you, why do you all all of it's a universal thing. All of us universal in our own nature are blissful. And so without, even when without the objects. So in other words, even when we meet somebody where we feel very happy, somewhere very deep down in that interaction, it is because suddenly I can be myself, you know? Yes. Uh, because the other person is uh, uh, really kind of, is a clear mirror. It's a yes. clear mirror. That's and correct. And so it, it is allowing me to be myself. Yes. Yeah? The other person is useful to know that your nature is the self. Yes. You see, so you we are very happy in those encounters correct. versus others where I can't see myself and I'm very troubled. Yes. Absolutely right. Because in the other person, you're seeing differences. Yes. You see, the moment you start seeing differences, then it is, not, it is, it is hurting yourself. Right. Yes. You know, then, then you see, suppose you see a son and then the son is a happy son who gives you happiness then you are able to uh, you are able to enjoy that company of the sun so all our human suffering therefore is finally amounts to the further we are away from our awareness of Above, our yes you're right your yes. spiritual self absolutely the deeper greater is the suffering correct yeah so, so anytime you're suffering you should ask this question have i moved away from myself yes you know, have I moved away from my own self? Then your yeah. answer will be yes. yes. Let me go back to my roots again. And it's like, me, standing on, yeah. like standing on the shore and yes. you can see everything. That's correct. Yeah. Very good. Thank Shama, thank, thank you. you. Shanta, you have a question? Um, Shekhaji, today yeah. I really don't have a question because um, I enjoyed your talk a lot today. I felt the depth was 
finally what I was looking for. And I am actually still in the state of thinking because I, I, you got, I got caught up at the point when you started uh, Karanam and Karyam. And uh, till the time, yes, it's gold and the chain, clay and the pot. It is perceivable for us. But I'm now thinking of how to perceive this Brahman and the creation of Brahman. So I'm trying to actually understand that bit. I have not fully understood. Um, it is still a worldly concept for me. So I really will need to listen to this talk again to get to that. Uh, so my request is if you could go a little bit slow and uh, because I'm finding, I might, I, I'm sorry if I'm, a, I'm the slowest learner in this class, uh, but for me to absorb these concepts, uh, um, especially when it is something like uh, this, where karanam and karyam, when you're looking at the bigger picture, it's taking me a bit of time and yeah. I, I need to really get to that understanding. And I think this Shankaracharya's Bhashyam is something which will help to get to the depth which I was actually looking for. So yeah. I'm very pleased yeah. that you yeah. have uh, yeah. taken I will, this. I will try to go a little slower next week. Today I was extremely fast in my class. Uh, yes, <laughs> I was thinking. You see, my uh, I was thinking of uh, uh, this topic is so 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 huge, and you know, this one verse is three hundred and fifty pages. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so I was uh, trying to see if there were some points where I can emphasize and then leave and then go faster again. Uh, you know, I was trying to do that today. But uh, uh, having heard you, definitely I will try to pause a little bit and go yeah. a little slower. Because when you, yeah, because when you said, uh, you know, for a minute I want you to think, and uh, I was hoping there would be at least a pause before you <laughs> give us that thinking yeah. point. Okay. And there was. <laughs> yeah, I was on to another topic immediately. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So okay. if you could, uh, that yeah. would be good because no, 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 it does I, yeah. take. Uh, a little time, but I will listen to this talk again to yeah, understand more. Listen to the talk. Okay. You see, yeah. one, I'll, I'll give you one clue. And okay? I will stop at every time when I feel I want to think because I can't stop you, but yeah. I can stop the video. Yeah, what, what you can do is, uh, you, you, you know, whenever you have a question, what I would suggest during the class, okay? Yeah. You just write in a small piece of paper, just keep a small piece of paper and say, uh, this, you know, uh, how is Karanam I want to go back to this. Oh, okay, I've got the notes. Yes. I do that yeah, when I'm all. writing. When and when I'm uh, when the lecture is going on, I'm doing that. Yeah, so do I've that. got my highlighted notes, my red notes. All right. And always, you see, to answer a question, you see, many times people can find an answer to the questions if they know the 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 uh, the, the method. Mm. The, the the simplest and the best method I have found is. Mm putting myself in the shoes as Atma. Mm -hmm. See, uh, the moment I put myself as consciousness principle and then try to see whatever is connected with that, then my answers will come. The moment I look at myself as the body, mm -hmm. then the answers will never come. Mm -hmm. You see, no, it is the me, body which is experiencing the waking. It is the mm -hmm. body which is experiencing the dream. It's the body which is experiencing the sleep. If I keep yeah. asking questions with reference to this body, I will never get an answer to mm -hmm. my question. True. I did uh, no, this for 20 yeah. years and I made a yeah. mistake of my dazzle, you know? Okay. Uh, somebody taught me and said that all the time, why are you looking, asking questions with reference to your body and mind, body and mind, body and mind? I'm from inside the cage, from inside the cage, no? Yeah. You have to exit out of the cage yeah. in order to see what yeah. was there inside the cage. Yes. So the, the, somebody told me, come out of that cage. First, you come out of the cage. 
don't keep on asking questions sitting inside the cage <laughs> because you are yeah. not going to find an answer. Yeah, so tough. Yeah. Yeah. Very tough. And, uh, you know, as seekers, it, Shanta, what you are facing is not, it, it is a universal problem for everybody. <laughs> you see, you said, what you said is, is common to all people who are listening to these Bashyams. Now, yeah, but one thing more is, you know, even for me, I'm trying to understand the space developed from Atma. As you said, the space is up or, you know, has come out of Atma. So, so Isn't it even true? these okay. words, no, no, okay. so much of thinking I need no, to understand No, 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 no. But again, just ask the question to yourself. Where was this space in my sleep? I really don't know. <laughs> the yeah, you don't know. <laughs> Where was this space in my sleep? So when I get up in the morning, isn't it true? Suppose I say that in sleep, I am Atma. Mm -hmm. In sleep, I am Atma. So when I get up, where do I get up from? I'm getting up from Atma. Ah, so that way. Okay. When I get up, what do I see first? The space. It's the space and the things. Then the My experience so of the world. Everything is coming out of. Yeah, everything of, is coming uh, from that Atma. Uh, you see, it's coming out of from Atma. And then when I go to sleep, suppose before, till before, one minute before I go to sleep, I'm sitting in my cot in, in London in an air conditioned room, which is uh, full of luxury and all that. The moment I go to sleep, all the things surrounding me is gone. Has become undifferentiated, homogeneous mass of consciousness. It has become, it is a state. This is what Shankaracharya's uh, uh, commentary on the fifth verse of Mandukya is. In Mandukya fifth verse, it is a description of sleep state. And he says that what is sleep? Sleep is a state in which I have no desires, number one. Sleep is a state in which I have no dream. Mm -hmm. See how beautiful is uh, Shankaracharya. Mm -hmm. you know, see, and it is true, isn't it? What is that state called as sleep? It is a state in which I have no desires, in the, which is what I negate waking. Because in waking state, I'm full of desires. I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. It never stops. So it is not, so what is a sleep state? Sleep state is something where there is no desire. Second, sleep state is where I don't have any dream. Which is a projection of my word, um, of my mind only. Very simple. Dream is nothing but is only a projection of my own mind. And what he says is that in the sleep state, it is nothing but it is an undifferent. What is the nature of that sleep state? The nature of the sleep state is what it is undifferentiated universe. All what I see as dvaitam or plurality, dvaitam means duality and plurality in the waking state, has become undifferentiated. Undifferentiated means I can't differentiate. You see, he gives the example of, again, this is Shankaraja's example. He says, suppose you are standing in the balcony of, uh, of your house and then suddenly there is no light. It is the, uh, the, the evening has come. Darkness has come. And there are no street lamps and there are no car lamps and nothing. There's no light. So what has happened is the whole thing which was before with the help of a light, you could see there's a difference of car, there are people. All has become one undifferentiated nothingness. That nothingness is called as ignorance. It is called as spiritual ignorance in Vedanta. So, in Shankaracharya's definition, he says, waking dream and sleep 
all three states are spiritual ignorance. I, I'm digressing away from your point, Shanta, but I just wanted to, you know, you, you asked me this question, how to, how to realize that yeah, space yeah. is coming from Atma. Mm. This is how you should realize that. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I think I, I, I really like that idea because when I, you know, when you said, when you wake up, you see the world, you see the Correct. space, yes. so it comes from the Atma. That's uh, right. Which is uh, one of the things that I'm, I was making notes of. Good. Uh, Very good. So, quite um, interesting. See, Thank small, you. small things like this, It if it clicks with you, then you can see the meaning of the Vedic uh, scriptures. Mm -hmm. See, Vedic scriptures, they have a lot of meaning. But that meaning has to open up for you in your own intellect. Now, on this explanation, one more small addition is when you spoke about when there is no light, you can't see anything, right? So that is total ignorance or spiritual ignorance. But in the light of Atma, you can see everything. Is that in right? Including then? ignorance. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> in the light of Atma, you can see knowledge and ignorance, both. Shekharji, I'm going through a very weird state. Sorry, I need to share this. I was supposed to be at a Vipassana meditation for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And after one day, I left it. <laughs> People were surprised. My my sister was surprised. She said, you can keep on. You don't, don't need to talk. You can sit in one place for long. You have no problem. You can starve to death. You know, you're good at fasting. <laughs> so how could you not do the Vipassana? Yeah. 10 days course. Yeah. And believe me, within the first day, I decided I'm coming. I mean, the first night itself. And the next day morning, I told the teacher I'm going. She said, no, stay, stay over. <laughs> and I stayed for one day and I came. And that's why today I could attend. Because what I felt is everything is so unreal. I mean, what are we doing there? Mm. And it started making me feel that I was different. I was not, I don't know how to explain, but I just felt that it was an unreal environment created to make you feel something you're great of, uh, of, you know, being able to not eat for 10 days as much as you would like, not, <laughs> uh, you know, all that. I felt it was so unreal yeah. that I just couldn't okay. cope with it. Yeah. Uh, I feel I'm not fitting the world anymore and I don't yeah. know how I'm going to go. No, Vipassana <laughs> is a very, very deep meditation uh, technique, but it doesn't suit all people. No, it doesn't. I've been yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, Shama, did extent. you manage to same do extent. it? Yeah. I, I was forced to. Yeah. Oh. But, but I'm telling you, with the knowledge of Vedanta, you will yeah. say that I don't require medita uh, Vipassana. Yeah. And, and that is what exactly I told the teacher. Yeah. And oh, I had God. to, you know, the thing is, it was so, because she was trying to explain to me that I should stay and at least try. And the next day morning, I said, nothing doing, I'm going. You know, day two, I actually left. Day zero, I decided I don't like it. Uh, when I had to, before I entering the meditation class itself, the room itself, I said, this is not what I've come for. When I sat there, I couldn't do anything. And then the day one, midday, I decided I'm going. Then she made me stay. And day two morning, I said, I'm leaving. And I left, actually. And I, mm. I left the place. So when the teacher was trying to tell me, I just told her, I said, see, uh, in Vedanta and in Bhagavad Gita, I have mm. learned some things which don't fit with what I'm trying to learn here. And I didn't feel I could sink. Because I said, I learned in Taitri Upanishad about Panchakoshas. And I said, oh, what about the Annamaya Kosha, which is so important? <laughs> no, because without... Your teacher will run away, you know? <laughs> I said, because if the Annamaya Kosha is not Trupta, you cannot meditate. You cannot yeah. do anything. Correct. And how are you going to achieve? And that is where, you know, I felt I was not fitting. And I just yeah. came No, off. it's okay. It's all right. Uh, so... You know, uh, I'm telling you, just a 15-minute talk, if, if uh, any person who listens to a 15-minute talk on the sleep state, what is the sleep state? Mm -hmm. uh, the fifth verse of the Mandukya Upanishad, you will never go to Vipassana. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Never. You don't have to stay 10 days. Only 15 minutes. You understand what is that Vipassana state in which you experience nothing. Why do you need to artificially create it when every day you are experiencing that in your sleep state? That is what I thought. Every it was day so artificial. What is something new you are going to create in that Vipassana for 10 days which you have not experienced? And anyway, even if you do experience something, it will go away also. After the, could, uh, yeah. yeah. Bharat has a question. So if he's written the message. Okay. Uh, I agree about Manduk Upanishad last week. Atyasa was, uh, was a mention. Oh. I have, if I Bharat's... come across Advaita Vedanta, I doubt that I would have tried. Uh, you're talking about Vipassana, is it? No, no, no. Bharat's mess, uh, question. Yeah. What is to... Aya Huascha? What is that? I don't understand. Oh, it's okay. Um, uh, Shakaji, last week someone mentioned Ayahuasca, which is uh, that uh, going to Peru and doing... Oh, yeah. Experiencing that. Um, um, I was just simply echoing the advice that you're giving, but um, uh, Advaita Vedanta kind of... Um, uh, renders all of those activities as just experiences they they don't you have an yeah. experience and that's it you're, you're, you're yeah. back to your normal self it's only Advaita that takes you a step further through negation I actually had a had a point made earlier on in the chat uh, Shakaji if, if you could take a read please Well, 47. Oh, I'm in my time. 47, your time, this one? But yeah, yeah, but can yeah. it be said that the relationship between Vritti Jnanam and Soroka Jnanam is like the relation between water and a wave? Uh, if there is a knower, then it can be logically asked who knows the knower? Uh, this leads to infinite regression. Yes. And then it's an appearance. Uh, as the knower, as the experience can continue. Yeah, that's correct. See, uh, Bharat, what you are, it is correct when you compare water and wave. Water is the content of a wave. So, wave is a vritti. So, the content of a vritti is consciousness. The vritti, the moment the vritti comes, the, uh, the mind has already come. Without mind, there's no vritti. So mind is the instrument. So the moment you you have you, you are in contact with the vritti, I mean, I see, uh, you see uh, your the the methodology you are following is uh, through the vritti route. What you are saying is that knower is not possible as. Uh, as uh, in the sarupam, because it will lead to infinite regression, which is correct. I guess, I guess um, it's really the earlier point, uh, Shakaji, that, um, like, say, say for example, I'm I'm a software developer. I used to write games when I was little. If I write mm -hmm. a software game, I need to know all the characters, all the objects that I'm going to have before I start giving the game out to, for people to use. So when people play my game, they can shoot at monsters, they can break down walls. So walls, monsters, objects, they are all pre-programmed. But in our experience, we, we have infinite capacity to experience anything. It's not, it's not pre-programmed. That, in, that infinity, infinitude, that ability to experience anything, my understanding is that I'm trying to understand Shankara's Bhashan, but my understanding is that that's the Vritti Jnana with the Tripati of yes, of, of the Nama yeah, you're right. Mind. But but within that, there's that constant Swarupa, which is allowing all this infinite mm. experience to happen. And and that Swarupam is an independently existing principle Correct. that you should add to that. Correct. So see, so, see, see, all this knowledge we get only from the Veda. Yes. So we are using the pramanam. We are using the instrument called as Veda. When when we are inside trying to dissect our mind, 
it's it's this very swarupa of gyada which we're using to understand the veda to do the apavada right now correct yes you do the apavada with the help of veda because veda is teaching you that in the vritti there is a, the content of the vritti is consciousness the moment you are focused on the consciousness automatically the vritti goes away correct yeah you will find this out. You see, it, this is a constant dynamic inside your mind which is happening constantly. Vritti will come. The moment you become conscious of it, the vritti is gone. The moment another vritti comes, you become conscious of it, again the vritti is gone. So, the, 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 this is where uh, the meditation helps. That you, you start being a sakshi of all the thoughts and you remain as a sakshi ever. That's all. Good. I'm I'm glad you bought this point, uh, and because this way of understanding is uh, cannot be done by many people, because uh, this requires a lot of practice of uh, looking at your own mind. And the, what is beautiful is there is a practical advantage, uh, Shekharji, which I'm noticing is. Once I accept whether whatever is the experience that it is only vritti, you know, it is very easy to let go and yes. then move on. But otherwise, you hang on to that, whatever, you know, maybe the vritti it is, whether it's a happy thought or a sad thought or whatever. You it, it grabs you, it holds you there. Yes. But if you drop it yeah. as only vritti, it's very simple. I, I? I'm really enjoying that bit. <laughs> good, very good. It's you're applying your uh, you're applying the Vedantic principles to your life, which is good, because that is how you grow in spirituality. Yeah, Deputy, it's I, just a rescue. Wanted, I just wanted to add that this um this this um um the the the, the sakshi it's impersonal, and and it's almost like um um removing the personal aspects of your experience, and. By being, I don't know if this makes sense or not, so I'll just say it. But by being, being recognizing that impersonal sakshi, everyone, everything else, all your experiences, especially with other people, whatever they're going through, you can be more personal because mm -hmm. your personal aspects are now impersonal witnessing. Yeah. Yeah, you're I right. Think. Yeah. Yeah. Good, Bharat. I think you're, you, like I said, that you're applying it. I'm very happy uh, when you ex when you explain what you are saying. It uh, it uh, it it goes well with the Vedantic uh, learning which you have done. I'm very happy. Thank you, Sekharji. Uh, what Bharat now explained is the is the concept, uh, not the concept. It's, it's explained in this Keno Upanishad, Pratibodha Vididham. Yes, the fourth verse of the second chapter, Pratibodha Viditam Matam. Pratibodha is the Swarupa Jnanam. Bodha is the Vritti Jnanam. Same, same Keno Upanishad you apply in Taitri Upanishad also. Pratibodha is Swarupa Jnanam. Bodha is Vritti Jnanam. So always try to say, I am the Pratibhoda. I am always there before knowledge of the whole universe. See, I am there. That is what is Atma. That is what gives me the freedom from sorrow. That is what gives me the freedom from my mind. You see, in Vedanta, we say there are two goals. One is Sukha Prapti and Dukkha Nivrti. Both these are to do with the mind. And both these are achieved. The moment you say, I am the witness consciousness of the mind, then both these goals are gone. You are sukham by nature. Okay? Good. Okay. Thank you. I think we have spent quite a bit of uh, time. And uh, Shanta, I will try to go a little slow next week. <laughs> thank, you. thank you and uh, good day to all of you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.